Hello everyone, this is Ogaya Azerbaijan and today we have a young talent from Norway who started her music journey in her teens. Uh, she has a pretty unique voice and she's uh, made up her mind. There's no coming back from the death of us. So let's welcome the one and only Elze Bay. Hello, Elsie. Hi. Hi, how are you? I'm doing good. And you? I'm good. Thank you. Good, good. Elsie, um, before starting interview, can you please introduce yourself? Uh, who is um, Elsie Bay? And uh, why choosing actually Elsie Bay instead of Elsa Solesvik? Uh, so my real name is Elsa Solesvik, and I am a girl from the west coast of Norway. And I used to be in a duo before called Elsa and Amelia. And so when I was going solo, I thought of maybe just keep the name Elsa for my artist project. But then, you know, there is a Disney movie called Frozen. And in that movie, there is a princess called Elsa. And I thought to myself, maybe I should have an artist name that if somebody goes looking for it on Google or something, they will actually find me. And I don't think I can compete with Princess Elsa there. Um, so I asked around and I spoke to my mother about it and she said, why don't you choose the name Elsie? Because she thought of naming me Elsie when I was little, but then she landed on Elsa because that was my great grandma's name. Um, so she was like, oh, you have to take Elsie. And so I did. And then my management was like, okay, well, maybe we should add a last name as well, because there are so many Norwegian female artists with one name, like Sigrid and Aurora and... And we thought maybe, okay, let's, let's try and stand out a little bit. So I went to Google Translate and I put in Vik, which is the last part of Solisvik, my last name, mm -hmm. and went, turned it into English and it was Bay. And I thought, okay, well, there we have it. Oh, wow. Very interesting story. Uh, but Elsie, uh, who is your actually music inspiration or who influenced you music-wise? Um, well, so uh, I was... I was always listening to a lot of pop music um, and I was watching these, you know, MTV on these music videos going on television. I, and it was a lot of like American stuff with like Beyonce, Rihanna and Jay-Z and that stuff. Um, but it was really Amelia who got me into music uh, and thinking about writing music. I had always just been a listener. Um, I did play the guitar a little bit, but I never thought about like becoming a pop star or anything like that. I wasn't until I met her and she was writing songs and she was singing and she was like, oh, you can play the guitar. And then I could sing and then she could sing. And I was like, okay, okay. And then it was fun. And I thought, okay, you know what? I, I want to try and write a song as well. And my first one wasn't good at all. And my second one wasn't good at all. But then after a while, they started to become pretty decent. <laughs> uh, you, you said that you, you created uh, a duo, uh, Elsa and Emily. Uh, which lasted for eight years. So why why from duo to solo? Well, I think it, it was a mutual decision for us. We had been playing together from the age of 13 to 21. And, you know, a lot happens from 13 to 21. Um, and so it was just, you know, time for us to do something different and sort of figure out what was, what was next, really. Um, and for me, I didn't want to quit music. So I thought immediately, okay, I have to continue writing songs and and probably do a solo project. Mm -hmm. And uh, in your opinion, uh, which one is harder, duo or solo? Oh, it depends. Um, I think the what is really great with being in a duo is that you are always two people. So when everything is going well, you are you have somebody to celebrate with who is going through the exact same thing as you. And when things aren't going that well, you are also two people um, dealing with it at the same time. So, mm -hmm. so I kind of miss that a little bit. Um, and what is great going solo is that it's only up to me if I want to release a song or not and what I want to do. Mm -hmm. So there, will, there aren't that many compromises and that type of stuff. And uh, what did this experience give to you? It gave me a lot of experience. You know, when I was 13 years old, I didn't know anything about the music industry. And so to just have eight years of like starting at the bottom of playing like school concerts all the way up to get, having my first record label deal and touring and uh, releasing two albums, all of that 
having that sort of as an experience now going into MGP and going into my solo project is very, very, very valuable. Mm -hmm. I am very grateful for that. Since you also uh, talked about this, you also released two albums uh, as a duo in 2014, and less uh, Optimism, and in 2017, Kill Your Darlings. So what differs uh, in your music if to compare what you perform uh, now? I think, you know, um, in Elsa and Amelia, we had to find sort of common ground. We had to write music that we both thought was, was good music. And now I can write pretty much whatever I want. And so I've spent some, some time trying to figure out, okay, who am I now that I can do anything? And I think a lot of the music is going gonna, gonna to be in the same genre. It's going to be um, close, but not too close. Um, so it's basically taking Elsa out of Elsa and Amelia. So a lot of the songs will probably be, be a little bit similar and, and some will not be. Um, mm -hmm. So for, for example, for the Kill Your Darlings album, it was very divided into Elsa songs and Amelia songs. So like Ocean and Avula, they are very Elsa songs. And then, you know, Kill Your Darlings and The Drowning are very Amelia songs. Um, so yeah, maybe maybe some songs that are a bit like Ocean for my next, my next stuff. Okay. And Elsie, uh, you also studied political science uh, as well as uh, law and criminology, if I'm not mistaken. So tell me, how well does uh, music goes with politics? <laughs> well, there's a lot of politics in music for sure. So, so I think, uh, yeah, it's great to know a little bit about politics. But um, so the thing is about political science and criminology and law at the University of Norway, there is not a lot of mandatory activities, which means that I can do whatever I want with music and then I can read on my own time. So it, it's a very flexible sort of um, program to, to be studying. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's, that's the only, because I, I try to focus on music. Music is my first priority. And then I, yeah, the university stuff is more like a hobby kind of, so. Uh, another thing about you that uh, you like writing songs. So how does a uh, songwriting procedure uh, works for you? Well, my favorite type of uh, way to write songs is with a producer so that I have somebody else who uh, comes up with a chord progression because, you know, I play a little bit guitar, guitar and I do know my way around a piano, um, but there's something about me. I'm just so much more inspired when somebody else is making something first and then I just start humming melodies and uh, so maybe some gibberish lyrics like... And then filling in with words later on. Um, so yeah, that, that's that's my favorite way to do it. And then, you know, if I'm alone, I can do that process all by myself. I like to write my own melodies and lyrics and then maybe show them to somebody and get some feedback after. Um, and with other people, you know, if I write for another artist, you know, we have a conversation about what do you want to write about? What is your style? What do you like? What's your mood like? And we just start bouncing off each other ideas. Uh, then you also wrote a song called uh, Heaven Made, um, which mm -hmm. was one of the title songs of the South Korean TV series uh, Show Window, uh, The Queen's mm -hmm. House. So how did the collaboration start it? Um, well, actually, uh, uh, I was on a camp where we were writing songs for the Chinese market. Um, we <laughs> had this camp that lasted for a month and we were... We were uh, maybe 10 people and together we were supposed to write 100 songs in a month uh, and so we did and we sent them to our contacts in China and we got a phone call back maybe half a year eight to ten months later and they said um, we actually placed one of the songs in Korea mm -hmm. are you interested in in being the artist on the song and keeping sort of the vocals because the songs that we did for China were supposed to be for Chinese artists so that they would pick the song, translate all the lyrics and do it themselves if, if they wanted, of course. Mm -hmm. um, so I just said yes, basically. <laughs> and, um, and now the song is in the Korean TV show, which is really, really cool. Yes. That is my first sort of cut in the, in the Asian market and in Korea. So it's, it's really, really cool. Is it your dream to be famous in uh, Asian countries? 
<laughs> well, I think I wouldn't say that my dream is to become famous, but I would say that my dream is to be able to continue doing music. And uh, sometimes fame comes with that and sometimes it doesn't. Um, it's really all the same to me. I think as long as I can write songs and perform and yeah, I'm mm. very happy. Well, let's move to MGP then. <laughs> Yeah. So how did you decide to participate uh, in MGP? Well, I was actually asked. I had written this song and we had written it on an MGP camp for MGP. You know, like if, if they like the song, then they can they can have it. And and I was the singer on it and I had written a very personal lyrics that day. And they asked me because they liked the song. They asked me if I wanted to be an artist as well. And I, it kind of made sense to me to say yes. Mm -hmm. since it was a personal song and I felt like it could fit with with the other songs that I've written and also you know I'd, I hadn't released my solo project yet so it just the timing also was really nice I think to to just start getting some music out there and doing it through MGP would be you know amazing so, mm -hmm. so that's kind of how it happened <laughs> I actually love your song personally. Um, it's Thank very so emotional, much. and you can uh, send it uh, through 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 uh, your staging, and uh, it was amazing. But Thank you so much. Uh, now I have uh, a question. Um, many people actually found similarities in "Death of Us" with uh, Lana Del Rey's uh, "Young and Beautiful." And what can you say about the ac accusations about uh, that um, that it's it's copy of Lana's song? Well, I think from a music uh, like theory perspective, it's not a copy, um, but it is, you know, they have a lot of the same elements with the strings and the piano and, and a female singing. Um, so, you know, I, I get it. It's, it's, it, you know, they're closer than a rock song to mm -hmm. Lana Del Rey, but at the same time, it's not, it's not the same song, you know, it's mm -hmm. not the same melodies. We haven't copied anything in a sense um, that isn't allowed. Mm -hmm. So, but but it's a very beautiful song. So it's also an honor to be to be compared to someone like that. Then can you please explain uh, what would you like to convey through your song, uh, Death of Us, to your listeners? Well, for me, it's really important that people can sort of interpret the lyrics in their own way. Um, so that I don't want to talk too much about what, what it's about for me, even though it is a personal story. Um, yeah, I think it's just super important that a song can can mean whatever people want it to mean to them and that it can, mm -hmm. um, yeah, just be whatever people want it to be. Mm -hmm. Are you planning actually to change anything uh, regarding staging? Yes, we are. I think, I think probably almost everyone is gonna have a few changes just because, you know, whenever you see something, there's always something that maybe the lights or the camera angles, or there's always something to improve, you know. Um, but we are talking about it now, and I think there definitely are going to be some changes, but mm -hmm. we haven't landed anything yet. You know, it's still, um, there haven't been too many days since we did it, and there are still a few days and weeks to go. So, um, so yeah, some changes, but I cannot say anything specific yet. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Elsie, uh, another thing which is very interesting that you also wrote songs for um, other artists in MGP, such as last year's uh, Witch Woods uh, for Emmy mm -hmm. and this mm -hmm. year's uh, Hammer of Thor for Oda Gordrosen. So um, how does it feel to compete uh, against yourself in the competition? Well, I mean, first of all, it feels really, really great. Um you know, to, I feel like it's almost like cheating that I have, <laughs> have another song to root for as well. Um, it's, it's a, it's a great feeling. Mm -hmm. Actually, another thing about uh, that uh, song, it's, it's my, another favorite from really? MGP. <laughs> so I, at, when I was uh, researching and I found that you wrote that song, I was like, oh my God, like, I definitely <laughs> <laughs> will like, uh, you represent like Norway in, in the Eurovision Song Contest. Thank you. And then, um, Elze, you are one of the favorites of uh, the bookmakers. Uh, so, but if not you, uh, who you would like to see to represent Norway? Well, of course, um, 
if not me, then my other song, Hammer of Thor. And if not that, um, I'm not sure. I feel like there are a lot of great songs and there are a lot of different songs. Mm -hmm. So it's like, what does the people want? Do they want the Subwoofers? Do they want North Kid or maybe Vilda or Frida? What do they want? Uh, I'm not sure yet. Um, you know, they wanted Fruda for sure. So that's a little bit of rock stuff. Maybe that's what we're going for this year. Mm -hmm. Who knows? <laughs> Then do you watch Eurovision in general? I do. Mm -hmm. I do. But you guys always know so much more about it than <laughs> I do. But I do watch every year. I do. But uh, who, who will be your uh, ultimate favorite? Um, I think it. I've, I keep saying Euphoria this week. But I, I, I change my mind a lot. Um, you know, my favorite moment was when Alexander Rybak won with Fairy Tale, of course. <laughs> I was young and... Little Norway was winning. Um, so, uh, but yeah, Euphoria. And also like last year, I really loved Switzerland and France and Italy. Um, yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Elsie, do you have any message for your fans? Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for the epic response you've given me so far. I am so, so grateful for you guys. Um, keep doing what you do. You have been so amazing. Um, I hope that you will be watching on the 19th of February. Um, and if I go to Eurovision, if I'm lucky enough, I hope that you will be watching there as well. And I hope to make you proud. Thank you so much. Thank you. And um, as a last thing, um, if I ask you, can you sing a little of your song? Okay. <laughs> the devil hides between the jack and the king, the Jezebel filling space in your sheets. Am I keeping you from your issues laying next to you like it's nothing? There you go. <laughs> oh my God. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, actually, your your voice is, is so I don't know. It 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 makes everyone like emotionalizing. Thank it's so real. Much. It's like. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, thank you very much for the interview and very good luck in in MGP. Thank you so much, and thank you again for having me. It's really great. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye.